Hey, thank you guys for being here. And I want to just first say I'm so excited for you to make the decision to join our sales program here. We are on a mission. We believe that sales is the greatest career anyone could ever have. And we want you to know we're excited to have you in the program. Also want to say thanks for taking a few minutes uh, in the last couple of weeks to complete the questionnaire we sent out to you. This questionnaire is really about sales only. I want you to imagine the greatest salesperson in the world that doesn't exist, the no fault salesperson. They do everything right all the time. And we know that's not realistic, but that's what we compare you to. So I want to introduce you today to your sales insights report. You're going to get this report, but before you do, we want to make sure you're prepared for it and you're looking at it through the right lens and you have the right mindset. So we've identified really 21 core competencies. And these core competencies, obviously many of them are weighted differently. They're not all equal. I'll go through many of these findings with you at a higher level and kind of help you understand what to review when you get your own report. Um, it's not good, it's not bad, it's not right, it's not wrong, it's simply a starting place. We know you don't have a lot of sales experience. Well, some of you may have you know, sold uh, Girl Scout cookies, some of you may have sold fertilizer, some of you may have worked at restaurants. There are a lot of different ways to get great sales experience other than being what most people view as sales, which is kind of that less nester from uh, Groundhog Day. And that's not what sales is. So we'll walk you through some of this stuff and I wanna make sure that you guys, again, think about this in the right mindset. First thing you're gonna do is get a link. When you click on that link, you're going to see a video. We want you to watch this video first. So here's what I want you to expect. When you open your report, it's gonna be about 30 pages on page three. These are the questions that we're going to answer with this report. So this is a sales business centric report. This is not, do you make friends? This is not personality. This is not behavioral. This is not aptitude. This is what does it take to be successful in sales? And our job is to help you learn as much as you possibly can so you can go out and get one of the greatest jobs and careers in the world when you complete this. Over on the right, you see the keys, the hammer as you look through the report. That'll be about skills, the DNA strand. Those are kind of things that we call sales DNA. I'll get into some of that with you. The brain icon is more about belief systems. Obviously, the check mark means that's a strength, and the X means it's an area for improvement. Let's talk about the most important, grit. Grit is the passion and perseverance for long-term meaningful goals. It's the ability to persist in something you feel passionate about and perseverance when you face obstacles, most importantly, that get in the way of your desired outcome. So in your report, you're going to find information, not necessarily in this format, but we are measuring Grit in sales, the will to sell, desire, commitment, outlook, motivation, and responsibility. Those five represent will to sell. Desire is really the passion for success. Like a six-year-old that can't wait to get up on Christmas morning and get to the Christmas tree. And that desire is necessary to be a high performer in sales. Commitment. Willingness to do whatever it takes, no matter what, as long as it's moral and ethical. Not conditional commitment, which means I'll do it as long as it's not too hard. I'll do it as long as I don't have to travel. I'll do it as long as I don't have to do things that make me uncomfortable. Commitment is the single most important competency for success in sales. Commitment is what drives that mountain climber to the top when it's an hour before dark, they've been climbing for eight hours, their muscles are filled with lactic acid and they want to give up. Commitment is what drives high performance outcomes. Outlook, this is really defined by how you feel about yourself, how do you feel about your market and how do you feel about your business? Now we know again that you don't have a lot of sales experience and again, these findings aren't good or bad. We just want you to know what they are. Outlook, is really kind of how you feel about yourself. And so when you think about what has happened to you in the past, when things are going great, you have a very strong outlook. When things might get tough, the outlook might change. Maybe there was a traumatic life experience for you. Maybe someone 
lost their pet. Maybe some market changed. Maybe somebody had to move across country. Um, that will change your outlook. And what we know is when you're in the selling role, outlook is critical to success because any chink in the armor you have inside is going to show up on the outside. And you've seen this with your friends, you've seen this with your family, maybe things were going great and you went through a breakup or one of your friends went through a breakup and their head went into the tank. Well, everything looks not rosy from that perspective. So we want to help learn, help you learn and teach you how to keep those bad things that happen in life that we can't control in a box and out of your sales arena. Motivation. We're going to measure three types of motivation. You see the dollar sign. That's obviously external or extrinsic. None of these are good, bad, or ugly. They're simply helping you learn how you're motivated. The heart represents extrinsic. And the extrinsic means we want a good place to work. We want to help the community. We want to do good for all. We want to save the earth. We want to do our best to preserve good things for other people. And then the handshake represents altruistic. And altruistic means we simply are here to help other people. So it's really helpful for us to know ourselves what motivates us because in sales, there will be lots of peaks, lots of valleys. The goal is to keep the peaks of the valleys closer together and to continually stay motivated. Of course, the bottom two are driven by. Rocky, can I ask you to just just uh, redefine motivation because I had a glitch there for a second and I missed the explanation or the definition of motivation. Motivation is how motivated are we and are we motivated enough to be successful in sales? And we measure three types of motivation. The dollar signs represent external motivation. That is money, rewards, recognition. The heart represents extrinsic, I'm sorry, intrinsic motivation. That means we want to feel good about ourselves. We want to help other people. We want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. We want to work in a good environment and we want to help people. The handshake represents simply, we want to help others, altruistic motivation. The bottom two, of course, support the top, the will to sell average overall and the coachable. And the coachable is really how coachable is someone. Maybe you've played on a team, maybe you have been an assistant coach, maybe you helped uh, in some other areas of sports and you've had or seen people that have a really high ego and they believe a lot in themselves and they don't think they need any help. Those are the people that will yes you to death and then go out and do what they want to do anyway. The other side of coachable is empathy. When we have too much empathy for the problems that our clients have, that gets in the way of helping them make decisions. And that's really what sales is, is helping others make better decisions. And then of course, the figured out factor. How quickly can we figure things out and put them to use in the real world? So imagine you got a software program, someone with a low figured out factor, the first thing they do is call the 800 number or get on the chat line and they wait to be told to hit the run button. Someone with a really high figured out factor, they'll hit the run button, they'll play with the commands, they'll look at the drop down menus, they'll scroll through all the commands and they'll do their best to figure it out. And they'll only call the 800 number if it's the last ditch effort. The higher the figured out factor, the faster you can learn and put things into play. Sales DNA. These are what I would lovingly call the hidden or invisible weaknesses that neutralize our strengths in sales. Now, we all have natural strengths and you all have great communication skills and you have a lot more potential than you might even realize today. These DNA factors will get in our way because we don't recognize what they are doing and how they work. So these are the things that are three, four, five layers deep that drive our conscious thought, that cause us to behave in certain ways or not behave in certain ways. And those ways sometimes can get in the way of productivity and sales. 
The first one is need for approval. If you've taken any psychology classes, you've probably heard of this. Salespeople with high need for approval confuse the need for approval that we all have and they confuse getting it from their prospects as opposed to getting respect from their prospects. We don't need people to like us. We need people to trust us. And sometimes those are interchangeable and sometimes they're not. And so it's more important to get your prospects to respect you than it is to like you. When salespeople have high need for approval, they tend to have bloated pipelines. They take stalls and put offs and think it overs. They tend to not ask the hard question when it needs to be asked at the right time. So therefore, need for approval really gets in the way of shortening sales cycles, being more effective, asking hard hitting questions that rock your prospects world. Controlling emotions, this is really what we would refer to as staying in the moment. Oftentimes a salesperson would be in a meeting and they're thinking about their previous meeting. They're thinking about what happened that got them in front of this prospect. They're thinking about what's going to happen afterwards. Maybe how they're gonna spend the money that they make in commission. Maybe what their bonus is gonna look like. Maybe they're thinking about what are the problems that are gonna show up that I need to overcome. And by doing that, they often create those problems unconsciously as well. And so when we're in sales, we want to stay right in the moment. We just want to stay right here. We want to stay right here and now and think only about what is this prospect telling me? And we're not thinking to ourselves because that means we're talking to ourselves. And if we're talking to ourselves, we're listening to ourselves. So controlling emotions really means becoming a great listener. People that have trouble there, tend to talk over others, tend to not ask the right questions, and tend to be befuddled by objections that might cause them to be taken aback. Supportive beliefs. In your report, you're going to see about 66 different records that we screen for. These will be identified with the brain icon. They're things like, I think $1,000 is a lot of money. I can't close in one call. I can't call a CEO. The economy is tough right now. I have to send information first. And there's 66 of those things that we identify based on the questionnaire and how you answered them. You won't have all 66, but you will have some of those. And so we know that sales is much like life, a self-fulfilling prophecy. And if I believe I'm going to have a problem, then I will. And again, I will manifest that problem by my own internal thoughts. So we'll give you some tools in the workshops and the classes ahead to change those non-supportive beliefs. Five cycle, we're gonna teach you a lot more about this, but basically what we know is that the way someone makes a personal buying decision is a mirror image of how they expect someone to buy from them. And so this creates a lot of problems for salespeople who tend to shop, they do a lot of research. And I know our moms taught us that. There was even a song when I was growing up by Smokey Robinson that said, you better shop around. You might have heard it. So we've all been taught to get the best deal. We've been taught to get um, the best price. We've been taught to shop and make sure we're making the right decision. Well, all of that is great until you get into sales. When you get into sales, we're gonna throw that out the window and we're gonna make buying decisions very quickly with a proper buy cycle that gives you the best information that you have at the time. And we're gonna help you make decisions quicker because that's what we have to help other people do again, making decisions. Money, we grow up with this taboo around money. Money is not important. Money is the root of all evil. And actually it's the love of money, which is the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money's none of your business. Other people's money is private. And so what we know is that when you get into sales, you are going to have to become very good at talking about money. And sometimes you're going to have to talk about money at levels that are a little uncomfortable for you. And so we'll be helping you understand how to change your money ceiling and how to improve your money tolerance. And so money is really nothing more than a tool we use in society to measure effort. It's not emotional, 
It's not good, it's not bad. It's only there as a tool for us to use. And so we're gonna help you reframe what you think about money so you're more effective at that. And then the ability to handle rejection. Of course, you know you're gonna get a lot of no's. The more no's you get, the closer you get to a yes. You've probably heard that at this point. And it's really about how quickly can we get back in the game once we've been kicked in the stomach, once we've been kicked in the teeth. We've been injured on the field. How quickly can we get back onto the field with not letting that rejection affect our personal view of ourselves. Skills and competencies. Of course, these are things we would expect an assessment to measure. So you will find information about all of these on the screen, these 10 skills, and they are required to be successful in sales. Some are more important in some roles than others, but we're gonna do our best to teach you about all of these roles and recognize these are not one dimensional. It's not just hunting, reaching decision makers or relationship building. Each one of these will have eight to 10 attributes that make those competencies up. And in your report, you'll be able to see the attributes that you have room to improve so you can improve that skill set. As an assignment, we'd like you to watch the video first when we send you the link to your report. We want you to review the report first, just to get an idea of what information is in there and the format and sort of get familiar. Next, I want you to read it a second time and let's comprehend what it says. What can you learn about yourself? Where can you improve? Again, don't take this personally. This only has to do with when you're in the selling role, when you're face-to-face -face or trying to get face-to-face -face with a new prospect and opportunity. And then I want you to read it again the third time or the fourth time and start put things into three categories, things I agree with, things I disagree with, and things I don't understand, and bring that assignment to your next class and we'll have some discussion about it and help you use this as the foundation to build your sales career. Thank you all. Have a great day and good selling.